Hello, I'm Ron Clark. I hope you'll forgive the poor quality of this video. I'll be reading from a script, and my camera is rather old. <clears throat> so. Over the past two years, I've had an opportunity to do a lot of research and experimentation. In that time, I've developed several new construction techniques and designs and have made many, many discoveries regarding the nature of what's possible with quartz crystal. About a year into this period of heavy research, I realized that I needed to have the conjoined power of ten radiators in order to pursue a specific set of experiments, and so I set to their creation. But since each of the previous ten radiators required about three to four months each to create, and I didn't want a three-year delay in my schedule of experiments, a radical redesign of the radiator was necessary, and what you see before you is the result. The biggest change is the design of the radiator's new containment vessel. Since a radiator mechanism has no off switch, it must be contained within a Faraday cage-like vessel when not in use. In past versions, this was achieved by inserting a copper wire grid hidden within the body of the containment vessel. This was always a cumbersome, problematic, and time-consuming solution, and worked only with simple polygonal forms. As an artist, as well as a craftsperson, I was never satisfied with the result. So I took this opportunity to create something that does satisfy on all levels. The form I have chosen for the new containment vessel is a truncated icosahedron with its 32 faces, seen most recently in my violet star. To create the Faraday cage effect, I have used a product called electric paint, which is made of carbon graphite. This creates a non-porous electric shield that keeps the mechanism's input in and the environmental influences out. It now takes one-tenth the time to create the Faraday cage effect compared to my old copper wire method and has liberated me from the constraints of a simple polygonal form. The top half of the containment vessel simply lifts off to reveal the radiator mechanism within. Inside the vessel are two holders that keep the mechanism stationary when not in use, and atop the vessel is a stand for displaying the mechanism while in use. Always make sure that the five-pointed star is surrounded by six-pointed stars when replacing the vessel's top. The second change is in the size of the radiator mechanism itself, which is now half the size of previous radiators. One of the things that my experiments have shown me is that in terms of quality and quantity of output, size doesn't matter when it comes to the radiator mechanism. What matters is the quality of the crystals and their tuning, and these remain as before. Of course, this smaller mechanism requires smaller quartz crystals, which results in a quicker build time, higher quality crystals, and less expense. The radiator mechanism automatically generates and radiates a continuous stream of Ketrick brilliance, which, when enclosed within a magic circle, becomes so dense and so intense it can easily be perceived by the uninitiated and those who are normally insensitive to subtle energies. The strength of this radiant effect is the result of the radiator's physical structure in conjunction with the physio astromental tuning of its quartz components. The basic shape of the radiator mechanism is a truncated octahedron, a 14-sided geometric solid composed of eight hexagons and four squares. Ten sides are each pierced by a double-terminated clear quartz crystal, and four sides are completely empty. 
Each of these double terminated quartz crystals physically touches a center clear quartz sphere and together they suspend this sphere at the exact center point of the mechanism. This physical structure alone, without any tuning of the quartz crystals, will automatically draw a modest amount of ambient energy into the central sphere and radiate it outward. But this energy will be of low quality for magical work and of insufficient quantity for any important tasks. When the crystals are tuned, however, the quantity of energy generated is many, many magnitudes greater, and the quality is rendered suitable for all magical operations, no matter how sublime. The radiator's ten double-terminated quartz crystals are each tuned to the essential meaning of one of the Kabbalistic Tree of Life Sephiroth, specifically the Sephiroth of the Graw Tree of Life pattern. And the central quartz sphere is tuned to the Kethric brilliance itself, the most sublime magical energy. By tuning the crystals in this way, the radiator becomes capable of generating a continuous stream of Kethric brilliance, which can then be employed as the magician wishes. Using a radiator is quite simple. Remove the mechanism from the containment vessel, reclose the vessel, and place the mechanism on the topmost stand. The radiator begins working immediately upon its removal from the containment vessel. The mechanism's default position is with the white kether crystal up and the yellow tiferet crystal pointing east. One can, however, place the mechanism in any orientation one desires and thus emphasize the upward pointing crystal's energy. To turn the radiator off, simply return the mechanism to its containment vessel. After spending about 11 months making these 10 radiators, and then 2 months completing the experiments they were needed for, I now find myself in the position of having ten lovely new radiators that I have no use for and no space to store, so I've decided to try to sell them. Cost will be $700 each, shipping included. You can request a specific color, but since there are only one of each color, choice will become more and more limited as time goes by. I accept payment through PayPal, and I'm willing to negotiate installment plans. You can reach me by email at ron at ronmade.com. Thanks.